We're going to continue our look at SHR versus traditional RAID. We've already looked at the read write speeds and upload and download and, re and RAID reconfiguration speeds when comparing these two um, redundant arrays. But today we're going to look at this RAID 5 configuration here on my right and this SHR configuration on my left and we're going to look at the performance differences between them and then we're going to action a critical event. We're going to pull a drive from both of them live and then see what happens when we try to interact with the storage and what kind of speeds we're looking at because in theory we should still be able to access the data util utilizing the parity and therefore the read and write speeds will be dictated by the CPU inside that NAS but also the RAID configuration we choose to use. So what I'm going to do is make my way over to the screen which is presumably somewhere available in front of you and then I'm going to start doing some tests. So here on the screen on, on the left here we've got that RAID 5 uh, uh, in operation there and again all that storage array. I think there's a little bit more data on this RAID 5 but again it won't make a huge amount of difference to this test. They're near enough identical. I think the difference there was some, some surveillance operations that were being conducted on the side and I think that has left the device with a little bit more storage on there. So don't worry too much about that slight difference there. It's so small it won't make a difference. So first things first, between the two of them, let's check, and this is going to be a very, very small check here. We're just going to see what the read and write difference is between them, uh, between RAID 5 and SHR, if we upload a bunch of files. So again, we'll go to, we'll go to 10G test files on both of them. Once again, we are just going to chuck some files in. There's some old recorded stuff. And this is 10.6 gig of files, which I'm now going to upload to both NASs together. And what we'll do is we'll get a clock ready as well. Reset that clock from last time. My God, that rate. And for those that didn't see last time, the RAID reconfiguration of turning a RAID 1 into a RAID 5 versus adding a drive to SHR, this was the result, the time difference between them. The um, SHR was finished, uh, well, I think it was at 90 something percent, something very close, 99.77 there, um, when we took this picture whereas the additional RAID was still at only 42% complete. But that's for the other video. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to get our clock getting ready to start it, and I'm going to start chucking these files over to each NAS respectively. So there's 10.6 gig there, and 10.6 gig there. And we're not really going to need the clock, because we've got the notification, but we're going to leave it there anyway, just so we've got something to focus on. I'm just going to pop that there in between the two of them. We're going to ditch that, and we're going to leave both of the, these open. And again, this, I don't know if this will be file versus file. Um, one could argue the fact that I've started one NAS first might make all the difference, but I don't think it will in a network setting. Um, we are connected via a, a pretty good switch here, and it will be well distributed. Um, but between the two of them, in theory, there should be almost no difference at all. And then afterwards, we're going to do a test where we're going to copy these files into a new directory on the NAS just to see which one can build the new directory quicker. In theory, it should be absolutely the same, but for those out there that do wonder about the performance differences internally and externally between a RAID 5 and an SHR, this video should be of some use to you. Um, but again, we're seeing very similar speeds there. I'm not going to say there's much difference between them. They're much of a muchness. And we're going to let that complete while it sends all of those files over. And now as we go to the closing stages, we can see that they've, again, still maintain that pretty much neck and neck speed there. And if you look at the minor difference between them when it was between copying the files onto the first NAS and then the second, you can see that the differences between SHR and uh, RAID 5 in this test show that they've both got the same upload speeds and write speeds to those individual NASs. So, next up, we're going to now make a complete clone of those files within each of them. So again, on each NAS, what I'm going to do is copy all of those files. Sorry about the clicking there for those that are listening. As you can see, we're, we've created 10.6 um, gig of data there. So what we'll do is we'll copy that internally there. Same goes for the second unit. Same thing. Again, I'm sorry about the annoying clicking noise. It is super annoying from my side as well. 
and there 10.63 again. And we'll start the clock now. And on both of these NASs, what we're going to do is create a brand new folder to copy that data into. Open up that one, same on that side. And now we're going to do a copy internal action to see which one can do it quicker. So once again, we're going to see both of these two devices. Now creating a clone of this data internally. So again, about 10 gig, and it is duplicate files that are already on the NAS. So in theory, it shouldn't take too long. Um, we can see the read and write speeds displayed on screen, but again, that number is going to fluctuate wildly uh, due to the density of these files. So we're not going to be able to rely too much on the read and write speed there. Um, the time difference between them is again so small as if to make not much of a difference. And given that both of these devices are doing their read and write procedure separately, that means there is no network intervention here whatsoever. Um, so while this is being done, we can again clearly see that both of these devices are working at pretty much the same speed. Uh, the left one, every time it leaps up 58.17, the, the other device respectively goes up 58 as well. We are seeing the tiniest, and I really do mean tiniest pinch of extra speed in the RAID. But again, we are talking seconds, less than two seconds here. So I'm not going to count that. I'm going to call that an anomaly and maybe the file that's being handled is slightly different um, than the file type. Obviously, they're dealing with the same files overall. But right now, I'm not going to give any advantage to RAID or SHR in this test. It's clear that they're both running at the same speed. That said, the SHR has suddenly taken a little bit of a lead and now it's lost it. So def definitely, the way it's handling the files are in a different order. They're in the background now as well. But the SHR managed to get ahead which is quite impressive. It actually finished a fraction quicker than its contemporary. So now we're going to move on to the last part of this test, namely the drive pull. I'm going to pull a drive from both of these devices and on both of their respective screens, you're probably going to see them come up with an alert to say a drive has been removed. So uh, at the same time as this, I'm going to try and put the resource monitor on both of these devices. So now you'll be able to see just how hard they're working. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get the resource monitor open. Same thing goes for this bad boy over here. We're going to pop that there. We're going to get the resource monitor open. We're going to close the storage manager because we don't need that. And what we want to look at, mainly here, you want to look at is the CPU and the disk. Everything else, obviously, the memory is going to be quite useful. We're not going to see as much there as we will from the others. So for now, I'm now going to, I don't know if this is on screen right now, who knows, but I'll smile for the camera. And I'm going to pull the, the drive out of both of these devices. I'm going to go for the drive bay closest to the USB on both of them. Three, two, one. Now both of them have got a drive completely removed from one of the bays in the RAID environment. And we're going to see how these two devices react to this kind of behavior. There you go, both beeping like a good one. So degraded mode is now being registered on both of these devices. And what that means to say is that both of them are now waiting for attention and they will continue to beep rather annoyingly. So I'm sorry about that guys. Um, we can acknowledge this alert. Go into that. Go into the alert panel there. And it's letting us know that a drive needs to be attended here. So again, once again, I am sorry about that beep, guys. But for now, what we're going to do is we are now going to write more data onto both of these devices. So on both of these devices, we're going to go into the Afobot test folder from a previous video. And again, we're going to copy the same data onto both of them. And we're going to see how well the device does it this time. Because again, we're still writing data. We're still writing data to these devices. And we're going to see how long it takes them and which one does it quicker. So again, we're going to put that. It's a bit late for the clock, but we're going to do it anyway. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to see which one transfers these files quicker onto the degraded volume, even though it's lost one hard drive in the redundant uh, RAID array. And here we come towards the last file and straight away what we can see is that both of them have maintained exactly the same speeds. So I'm going to do one more test. I'm just going to quickly get that beeping muted. Sorry about that guys. And we'll move on to the last test. Our final test is going to be downloading data from the NAT itself. Both of them have still got their degraded RAID status. If we go into the storage manager of both of them, we can see that both of them have suffered that drive failure that we caused earlier. So I'm going to download some data now. And what we're going to do is we're going to download, hmm, let's go with, uh, how big is this file? Let's have a quick look here. 10G files looking way too big right now. Let's go for the Afobot test. What are we looking at with the Afobot test? That's 10 gig. So let's download the Afobot test folder from both of these NASs and see what kind of speeds we're going to be getting. So without further ado, let's download there and let's download there. Well, we can have a look at the bottom left there because obviously when you download from a NAS, the zip is what you see and straight away what I think we're seeing now is that the RAID is definitely giving us um, the RAID 5 configuration is giving us better speeds to download from directly. Once again the fact that it was done first might make a difference but there's definitely a big old jump between these two in terms of that download speed and that gap is only getting larger. Um, I do think I mean at 10 gig here I reckon we're going to see a difference of about 15 to 30 seconds so it's not the end of the world but once you start dealing with bigger quantities than 10 g because remember this was around 10.6 gig overall I think we are still seeing a slight um, increase there from the RAID 5 over the SHR. Now we've already done a test already about reintroducing a drive into a RAID environment after a failure and getting a RAID rebuild so we're not going to do that with these two here. But while this does this, I will say that if you guys have got any recommendations, any queries about tests that you want to see between SHR and RAID, do let me know and I'll put it in other videos. In the meantime, what I'm also going to do is uh, some Blackmagic speed tests. And I will say that both of these devices, even with the degraded RAID, did give pretty good performance figures with regard to the Blackmagic speed test. If I open up here in the background and we choose one of these two devices, so we'll go for Z. Z was the RAID configuration, with Y being the SHR configuration. Again, we're probably not going to get great numbers while we're doing this download, but if we do a black magic speed test there of the RAID box, what we're seeing there straight away is the read and write speeds that we would expect. We're seeing here um, a write speed of about 104. The read has definitely suffered, I should say. I'll correct myself there. The read has suffered quite substantially uh, from the NAS, but again, that might be because we're downloading. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do another test of the other NAS, but right now we're looking at over 100 megs for write and somewhere between 25 and 30 megs for that read. So we'll stop that test and we'll test the other NAS while it's doing that other stuff in the background. And for this one, we'll probably move that box over ever so slightly so you can see the other one. And for this one, we're going to go for the other NAS, the Y NAS. Do the same test. Write speed as uh, originally seen, around about 100 megs. And the read speed there, when we get that clocked up, again, somewhere between 25 and 30. It will creep up a little bit. So again, in many, many regards, there is no huge difference between choosing 
between RAID and SHR in a typical environment. Well, of course, once you get to bigger storage volumes, things do make a difference. And if we do take a moment just to look at the performance, let's cancel that read write, we can see how these two devices are performing. Because remember, the RAID problem is still there in the background, and once we introduce a new drive, then we'll see some definite figures. But we can see that network speeds are pretty much identical there, although we are seeing better upload there. Um, and even though it is still lagging a fraction behind the RAID, with that gap getting just a little bigger all the time, not a lot, but just a little, um, but the CPU utilization seems to be pretty consistent on the RAID, whereas in SHR there has been a couple of spikes along the way. Um, disk utilization, if we have a look, in theory these should be near enough identical, but strangely they're not. Um, the spikes do change between the two of these two devices, as well as the volume utilization and access. Not enough data to really make a call on that one, but right now it does look like the SHR does work the pinch, the tiniest bit harder. But once again, we're not really going to criticize it for that. Okay, we're going to leave that to complete, and I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I don't know whether this video is going to end up as a two-part or just a one. Who knows? But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you buy your NAS from the guys at Span.com, the experts. Do remember to learn about NAS at NASCompares.com, where we review and check out NASes all the time to let you know which is the best. And finally, if you've got a question, send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.